The Sony ZV-10 at the time of launch was the best camera for vloggers and lifestyle shooters, but with new cameras coming out at a breakneck pace, is the Sony ZV-10 still worth it or is it too old? But there's two key features in the ZV-10 that make it better than every other camera in this price range. Because when it comes to finding the right camera for yourself, specs and features are definitely important. However, at this price range, most of the cameras all have the same specs and features. And what it really comes down to is what you're shooting and your style of shooting. And in order to make sure you have the right camera for your shooting style, you have to make sure it has the right design. And the Sony ZV-10 has a unique design that you will not see in any other camera out there because the ZV-10 was specifically made with vloggers, content creators, and lifestyle shooters in mind. Also, if you want the best price on your ZV-10, I'm gonna leave links in the description down below. The body and design is very compact and very minimal. It only has one button at the top to switch between photo, video, and slow motion, and a quick menu on the back screen to adjust all of your major settings. Best of all, it has a three mic array built into the camera that gives you really solid and crisp audio right in camera and in many cases, you don't need to get an external microphone. Keeping your camera small and nimble, plus it has a side articulating screen so you can see yourself while recording. And on top of that, you can also purchase a separate Bluetooth vlogging handle that also works as a tripod and wireless remote. The batteries on the Sony ZV-10 are pretty small, but the power management on the ZV-10 is pretty good, so these batteries will last you a while. But considering how cheap the third-party batteries are, I highly recommend buying a few spares. Inside the ZV-10 is where the real magic happens. The ZV-10 has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. Now 24 megapixels is pretty standard in terms of resolution, but the Sony ZV-10 sensor has two awesome features that take it way beyond a standard sensor. Because the ZV-10 sensor is back illuminated, it is shockingly good in low light. I can easily shoot at 10,000 ISO for photos with no issues of noise or grain, and video is not as good, but it's pretty decent up to 3,200 ISO or 6,400 ISO. And the sensor also has an onboard processor that gives you really fast and reliable autofocus. This is really helpful for vloggers and lifestyle shooters that just like to whip out their camera and shoot from the hip. And the ZV-10 has subject detect for both humans and animals, which works phenomenally in both photo mode and video mode. And the autofocus is extremely helpful when it comes to photos because the ZV-10 shoots at a blazing fast 10 frames per second, making sure that every single shot is in focus and 10 frames per second lets you capture any kind of fast moving action from a fast dog to a fast car. And the ZV-10 also shoots in 14-bit RAW, which delivers the highest quality photos and you can easily take these photos and edit them to your heart's content and easily get professional level results. And in terms of photos, in my opinion, it is on par or slightly better than a lot of newer cameras coming out there because Sony RAW has so much flexibility in it when it comes to editing. But video is where the real magic happens because the ZV-10 shoots 4K video, but it's super sampled from 6K effectively giving you the resolution and quality of 6K in your 4K video. And at the time of launch, the ZV-10 was one of the few cameras that did this. However, with newer cameras coming out, it's become a pretty common feature. And I will mention the other cameras that also have this feature later in this video. And the ZV-10 shoots 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second at 100 megabits per second data rate, which is everything you need as a vlogger, lifestyle shooter, or content creator. It also has buttery smooth slow motion in full HD at 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second, still at 100 megabits per second data rate. This is pretty much on par with the other newer cameras on the market, so the ZV-E10 does not fall behind in this aspect. However, there is one aspect that the ZV-10 does fall behind in. When it comes to video, the ZV-10 only shoots in 8-bit color. This really isn't as good for color grading when it comes to standard video, and a lot of the newer cameras coming out actually have 10-bit color in standard video. However, before you make up your mind, there is one key feature that the ZV-10 does have that the other newer cameras in this price range do not, and that's cinema profiles. The best ones that I personally like are Cinema 4 and S-Log3. These cinema profiles give you a lot more dynamic range and also a better color base to work with, so you can easily get a very cinematic look from this color even without 10-bit color. And if you're a casual user, you really won't see much of a difference between 8-bit color and 10-bit color unless you're color grading your video. And the ZV-10 also has digital stabilization built into the camera for smooth footage while vlogging or walking, and also there's stabilization built right into the kit lens 
lens as well. So you will always get smooth footage with the ZV-10. So how does the Sony ZV-10 compare to the newer and arguably better cameras coming out? And is the ZV-10 still worth it? Now, the newer cameras coming out have slightly faster autofocus, slightly higher bitrate in video, and also have 10-bit color as default in their standard mode. But for most vloggers, 10-bit color won't really make a difference because the main appeal of the ZV-10 is the design because this tiny little camera is built in every single way to make it as easy as possible to operate. It has this beautiful three-array microphone built right into it and this thing is really made for content creators, vloggers, and it's taking all the technical hassle out of your way so you can just be creative. However, if you're not a casual content creator or a lifestyle shooter and you want something with a little bit more power, there are better options out there for you at the exact same price. The main competition to the ZV-10 is the new Canon R50 that has just come on the market. The Canon R50 is still a small and compact camera, but it has a more advanced body design, both in terms of physical design and the software inside of it. For one, the Canon R50 has an electronic viewfinder, which is much better for taking photos. And it was made specifically for content creators with automatic modes for portrait, food, nighttime sports, and many other shooting scenarios, which automatically set the camera perfectly for that shooting scenario. And it also takes a lot of the technical hassle out of shooting. And the Canon R50 also has computational photography similar to your smartphone that uses several photos that it takes all at once and combines them into a really high quality photo giving you the most dynamic range and the best colors. And the Canon R50 also shoots 14-bit RAW but at a faster frame rate of 12 or 15 frames per second, making it slightly faster in photo mode. And the video in the Canon R50 is 10-bit color with HDR mode, giving you more room to adjust your colors and make a more cinematic look. However, the Canon R50 does not have cinema profiles like the Sony ZV-10, which is what you really need for more serious video color grading. And the Canon R50 is pretty good in low light, but it's definitely not as good as the Sony ZV-E10. And the price is exactly the same as the Sony ZV-E10. So for a lot of people, I actually would recommend picking up the Canon R50 instead. It's only slightly better, but if you're gonna spend the exact same amount of money, you might as well get the best camera possible. However, there is still one more option that might be better than both the R50 and the ZV-10 for both lifestyle shooters and content creators, and that is the Fuji XS10. The Fuji XS10 is very similar in terms of price and specifications, but the main appeal of the Fuji XS10 are the built-in film emulations that give you a really cinematic filmic look for both photos and videos right in camera without the need to do any sort of editing. And on top of that, the Fuji X-S10 also has 14-bit RAW for photos, but it also has cinema profiles like Fuji F-Log and Eterna profile for cinematic color grading in video. And I would argue that the Fuji X-S10 could look better in camera than both the Canon R50 and the ZV-10. However, the downside of the Fuji X-S10 is the fact that the autofocus really isn't as fast as the Canon R50 or the ZV-10. I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. But either way, the Sony ZV-10, the Canon R50, and the Fuji X-S10 will give you amazing results. You really can't go wrong with either of these cameras. However, I would still recommend the Sony ZV-10 for vloggers specifically because this camera is so small and light and it's really made for vloggers. And if you want the best pricing on all the cameras that we talked about today, make sure to check out the links in the description down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.